Hello everybody, my name is Kara, and today I am here with my April wrap-up. In April, I participated in a couple of readathons, the Magical Readathon and 30 Day Book Binge, as well as the ongoing Rereadathon. I didn't read all of the books that I had mentioned for my Magical Readathon TBR, but I will list down below which challenges each of the books counted for. But my 30 Day Book Binge was very successful because the whole point of that challenge is to read every day for 30 days. I will also put the information on the creators and hosts of the readathons in the description box as well. So I read 10 books in the month of April, and let's get into them. The first book I finished was Spindlefire by Lexa Hillier. This is the first book in a fantasy duology in this world. Fairies can tithe senses from people and especially they do this to children upon their christening and this is kind of a loose Sleeping Beauty retelling so that element is also at play here and we follow two sisters one who had her sense of sight tithed and one who had her sense of touch and her voice tithed and this could have been such an interesting book and unfortunately it just kind of fell apart for me. I did love the fairy elements of the book. I think that those were like some of the strongest parts of the story and I also really enjoyed the writing style. It was really beautiful and fairy tale esque but it didn't go over the top. But unfortunately everything else just didn't work. The characters were some of the flattest I have ever read about. I could not tell you a single thing about any of them now and I just read this book last month and even while I was reading it I had like no sense of who these characters were or of why they did the things that they did. There was one sister's plotline in particular, kind of the Aurora character, that was just so boring. It just, I didn't understand why most of the book happened, to be honest. And I gave Spindlefire two stars. The next book I picked up was Bryony and Roses by T. Kingfisher. This was one of my next round of five-star TBR predictions. I will link the video where I talk about the next group down below in the description. And this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling that stays pretty close to the original story at the beginning, and I really, really enjoyed this one. I loved the writing style. It was such a great balance of like beautiful passages and really really funny lines and I think that T. Kingfisher did such an amazing job of making both of those things feel natural in the same story. I loved Bryony, the main character. She was so clever and spunky and funny. And I also really loved the Beast character and the interactions between these two and it was just such a good book. It was unexpectedly creepy and frightening near the end and I thought those elements were done really well. And there's also a really strong element of gardening in this book. I'm not a big gardener but I thought that this was done so well that I really understood Bryony's passion for gardening and for flowers. This was just a really great fairy tale retelling and I gave Bryony and Roses 4.5 stars. The next book I finished was Blood Water Paint by Joy McCullough. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I have a full review on this book which I will link down below and I have also talked about it several times since finishing it but I loved this book. I think it's such an important story, such a well-written story, so emotional and moving and just a fascinating portrait of a really, really talented woman who unfortunately is not known for her talent so much as for her tragic backstory. But Artemisia Gentilici is definitely a historical figure who is going to stick with me. I gave this novel 5 out of 5 stars and say it with me, it's my favorite book of the year so far. Next I picked up Sunshine by Robin McKinley. This is another one I have talked a little bit about. It's a difficult book to summarize. It's sort of between post-apocalyptic and fantasy and there are vampires in it so you could also call it like paranormal sort of thing. There are other magical creatures as well. It's a very slow burn kind of story. So if you are a character focused reader like I am, I think you could really enjoy this. But there's not a lot of action, even though there is a lot of interesting plot developments. It's definitely more about the characters and their interactions and the world. I really, really loved our two main characters, Sunshine and Constantine. And I just, there's something about this book just really worked for me. I have seen reviews of this book who describe it as a romance, and I have seen reviews who say that there is no romance. And I feel like it's somewhere in the middle. It's kind of up to the reader to decide what kind of bond these characters have. And it's got such a great first sentence. It was a dumb thing to do, but it wasn't that dumb. Like, something about reading that just set the tone for the whole book, and I loved this. I gave Sunshine 5 out of 5 stars. Next, I picked up A Tale of Two Castles by Gail Carson Levine. It is about our main character, Elodie, who is sent away from her family to apprentice, but a bunch of things kind of happen along the way, and things don't work out quite how she's expecting. She ends up being an assistant to a dragon private investigator. There are also ogres in this kingdom, and the central plot or mystery involves this count who is an ogre, and kind of how the people of the town feel about him, and the fact that there's somebody out to get him. This was a really kind of disappointing book for me. I 
I love Gail Carson Levine's other works I have read, so this was just kind of mediocre. I didn't think that the writing was very good. It felt like she was really talking down to her audience, which is something I didn't notice about any of her other books, and the style was also very repetitive. I thought the plot didn't really offer that much, and the characters were also just lacking for me. Like, they're nowhere near Ella or Addie or, or Aza or any of these other fabulous female characters that Gail Carson Levine has given us before. So I do not plan on reading the sequel, and I gave A Tale of Two Castles three stars. Next, I picked up Retribution Rails by Erin Bowman. This is billed as a companion novel to her earlier book, Vengeance Road, but I would actually call this almost a sequel, I guess kind of a companion sequel, because the primary characters are completely different. I really loved the Vengeance Road like storyline and characters, and unfortunately in this one it wasn't as compelling. Like I didn't think the main characters were as interesting or well developed, especially the female lead. Everything about the characters was really surface level. I thought the relationship between the two main characters, while it wasn't rushed, it just kind of and I also really didn't like the glimpses we got of the main characters from Vengeance Road. I loved Kate and Jesse in the first book, but I'm just not a fan of like epilogue type stories. Like I don't enjoy seeing beloved characters like 10 plus years on when they're almost completely different people. I have found very few books or authors who can continue that characterization and make it feel consistent while also giving the spotlight to the new characters. And unfortunately, Retribution Rails did not do this either. I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more if it had been a completely separate story, because as it was, I couldn't help comparing it to how much I loved Vengeance Road. So I gave Retribution Rails 2.5 stars. The next book I finished was The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. This is a story involving fairies, and we follow this one town, or characters in this one town, that is kind of on the borderland between the ordinary world and a fairy forest. And the main plot is based around the fact that there is a fairy prince who has been asleep in a glass coffin for as long as anyone can remember. And then one day it seems like somebody has woken him up, and everything kind of takes off from there, and we follow our main characters Hazel and her brother Ben, and they're trying to figure out this dark presence in the forest, like who it is and what they want, and all of the ways that this is affecting the human world as well. So there were quite a few things I really enjoyed about this book. I really loved the setting and the writing and how Holly Black just, she nails the like creepy fairy atmosphere every time. I also was surprisingly invested in some of the side characters, and the reason I say surprising is because one in particular named Jack, the first impression I got from him I was like, what are you, like why are you here? And he actually became my favorite character in the book, and I also really liked some of the other relationships like Hazel's brother Ben, his relationship with this boy, and it is a diverse book too, so that was also really great to see. But unfortunately, I could not stand the protagonist, Hazel, because this girl was so mind-numbingly stupid that it was just such a frustrating experience to read this book. And I don't mean she made stupid decisions, because I am totally fine with characters making bad choices if we understand why they make them, you know? Like, if we get their reasoning and we see why they saw this as the best option, or maybe it even was the best option. Hazel did none of that. It was like everything in the book, like her internal monologue and the narration of the story and all of the past and present events of the book were telling her something was a bad idea. And she did it anyway, and not just once, but over and over and over. The majority of the plot is moved along by Hazel being a dumbass. And it wasn't just her characterization that dragged the book down for me, because the fact that she is the protagonist, and that all of her decisions are kind of central to the storytelling, also made the plot really frustrating. So even though I loved so many other things about the book, I can't give it a higher rating than I did because it just it just drove me crazy. Hazel is one of my most annoying protagonists I think I've ever read, and I gave The Darkest Part of the Forest 3.5 stars. The next book I finished was Ruin and Rising by Leigh Bardugo, and that is the third and final book in the Grisha trilogy. This is another one I have a full review and discussion on, actually for the whole series. I will link that down below and I won't go into too much detail about my thoughts. This is a Russian sort of inspired fantasy novel, and this was the conclusion, basically. There's not a lot I can say without giving away any spoilers, plus you guys probably already know what it's about, but I found the finale pretty disappointing, just kind of like the rest of the series for me overall. I really didn't like some of the plot developments, and I feel like there were some important character arcs or moments that were handled 
badly or kind of lazily, so I gave Ruin and Rising 2.5 stars. The next book I picked up was Beast Keeper by Kat Hellison, and this was for the BookTube Rereadathon challenge, which was to reread a book that confused you or that you had mixed feelings about. And this was honestly, this was one of the biggest surprises of the month for me, reading-wise, because I, ha I had almost unhauled this book. I gave it around a three stars the first time, because again, I was confused by it, and it just wasn't what I was expecting it to be. But this time around, I loved this book so much. This is basically a gender-flipped Beauty and the Beast story, and it is middle grade, and it is beautifully written, and Honestly, this is just, this was just such a fantastic book. It's so atmospheric and so quiet, and I really love the kind of underlying messages of this book, because even though it is like a Beauty and the Beast story and there's all these intertwining curses that often involve, like, true love or loving people, even though that is a big element in this book, I really like the fact that there's also this focus on, like, sometimes bad things happen and they have to stay that way. And that sounds like a really odd kind of thing to enjoy about a book, but I really like the balance of bitter and sweet in this novel, and I just, I highly recommend it. I am so glad that I didn't unhaul this, and I gave Beast Keeper 5 out of 5 stars. And finally, the last book I finished in April was To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Cristo. This is a dark siren, kind of Little Mermaid retelling, although I would, th I think it's more like loosely inspired by The Little Mermaid, and it follows two main characters, Lyra and Elian. A lion? I say that name differently every time. And Lyra is the siren princess, and she's a brutal killer, and Elion is a prince who has dedicated his entire life to eradicating her kind. And this is basically a story about how the two interact after Lyra gets turned into a human by her sea queen mother. And there are all these adventure elements, and it takes place primarily on a pirate ship, and there's a lot going on in this book. I read this as a buddy read with the lovely Amy from Blonde and Bookish, and I will link her channel down below. And I had some kind of mixed feelings about this one. There were a lot of things I enjoyed. I thought the world building and the writing and the two main characters were all really well done, but I feel like the book sort of suffered as far as the supporting characters go. I don't think they were that interesting or nuanced. The majority of this book takes place as like a journey on the pirate ship. I thought we were gonna get some like kick-ass siren world building and seeing Lyra adjust to life on the land or seeing how she interacts with a bunch of other humans on land, and that's not really what happened in this book. Amy is going to be doing a full spoiler-free review, so I will link that down below as soon as it is up, and I am doing the spoiler review and discussion, so I will link that down below as well as soon as I post it. So I did enjoy this. I do think that as mermaid books go, this was a really good one, but like I said, there were some things that kept it from being like 100% what I wanted. So I gave To Kill a Kingdom 3.75 stars. So those are all of the books that I read in April. Please comment down below and let me know what you thought of these books if you have read any of them, or just let me know something you read in the month of April that you really enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video, and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!